As all of you, I think, still out there, this is a dream come true. Merle is an American icon. He's been honored all over the world, and I think this will show him how much Bakersfield Oildale loves him. Because, Merle, I don't know if you remember the documentary when you were in the alley, you and Teresa, and you shook your head and said, nobody cares. Linda and I watched that, and we said, yes, they do. And here it is. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, the person of the hour, who you really came to hear, to tell us a little bit about how he's feeling today with this boxcar being here. Merle and Lillian, do you want to just come right on up with him and the two of you can say a couple of words. You know, everybody here is, is really special because of your interest and I appreciate it. I know my sister does. My father and mother would certainly be surprised and to see what's happened with the old box car. You know, it's, it's been the inspiration for more than one song that's been published all over the world. And uh, it offers a different view. And I wonder, I wonder when the box car was built. You know, they ran them on the railroad probably 50 years or better. And uh, if anybody knows or has any idea or has seen anything when they were taking it apart, I wish they'd let me know about it. But uh, I imagine it was probably built in the 19th century. And uh, no telling uh, how old it was when it was set down in 1935. Or it may have been there before 1935. Dad found it and bought it in 1935. But it's certainly a, a wonderful thing for the family and proud to be part of Kern County history. I want to thank all the special people involved, the Rankins and Linda Lake and Sheriff Donnie Youngblood for all the help today. Uh, appreciate that. We've had a lot of help from the sheriff's office over the years. <laughs> and that's about all I got to say other than one more time. Thanks to everybody. just doesn't belong where it's sitting. It didn't belong where it was sitting in Oildale. But there it was. And its history is really interesting because it goes back to the Bona family, which you historians remember, Kristen Bona was the first settler here. Well, we bought that boxcar from his granddaughter. And I got out the, the legal papers on it yesterday and saw her, her signature, Mary Ann Bona. 
And I thought, not only would my parents be happy, but so would the Bona family. And there's other Bona relatives in this town even today that I've been in touch with. So the, it is historic. We don't know how it came to be there. I suspect that somebody started a, a development out there because Mariana bought it from Mr. Wild, and all you old, old, old kids around here remember Wild's department store. Well, apparently Mr. Wild, yeah, oh, and the Wild House here has a neighbor. So Mary Anna bought it from Mr. Wild, but it was my dad with his hammer, crowbar, saw, my mother with a tape measure, and a shorthand notebook. They had to figure out where do you cut the windows, and mother said, you gotta have a window over the sink. Every woman wants a window over the sink. And they went to work. And it was absolutely amazing how cozy it was. It was warm in the winter, cool in the summer, hot like you people out there. It was cool inside that boxcar. And I remember my mother cooking Thanksgiving dinner for 22 people. Now, I know that sounds totally unreasonable, but the table sat six. So they ate in sixes. The men shared the time out under the shade tree. And, and it was a wonderful experience. And um, I remember. We moved in September the 15th, 1935. And um, we had electricity and we had water, but they didn't have the gas hooked up yet. So I don't know where they got this little wo uh, wooden cook stove, but they put it in the middle of the lawn and they lit a fire and they cooked dinner and we invited all the relatives to celebrate our house. And we've been celebrating that house all these years, and I'm so glad that the museum has accepted it so that others can come. And when it is beautiful again and doesn't look like a tulip in a potato patch, and it will be, it's going to be cozy, as my mother called it, and we're going to restore it to her favorite house. She owned three houses. This was her favorite. Thank you all for sharing that with us. <laughs> you know, the, the whole thing that's happened to me wouldn't have happened without Fuzzy Owen. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw him out there in the crowd a while ago, but we want to make mention of Fuzzy's contribution to this day has been a whole lot. Right and I'm thankful for, for our friendship. And those of you that, that like my music, and thank Buddy Owen. See, I told you the haggard were shy. <laughs> You're all so forgetful. <laughs> I neglected to thank the, the Rankin girls and everybody else that's been very close to me. Uh, Cynthia Lake, incredible young woman. Uh, there's just so many individuals to think and always praise for the wonderful work and the insight that they had into this. It's amazing what they've done. Gee, whoever you are, every one of you out there standing there is here because you are contributing to this celebration. We love you very much. Thank you. One more thing. <laughs> I know you can't see this from where you're standing up there, but last night I was going through some of my mother's things. I'm wearing the first key to the front door today. I hope to restore it. Uh -oh.
The letter? The letter. Tell them about the letter. <laughs> this is a special day for Merle and me. Our parents were very much in love, and they let everybody know it. And our father died suddenly with a stroke and left my mother a heavy load, as the music said. And she liked to write. She, she, she wrote music, too. So it was, he was born to be a musician. But in going through her things last night, when I found the piece, I also found a letter that I had never seen before, four pages long. And it was written to my dad after he died. <laughs> It is awesome. She she was she had never stayed alone by herself at night in her entire life until he died. She did not know how she was going to handle that. She was so afraid. The night before father came to her, held her in his arms, told her she would always never be alone and that she should never ever be afraid. And from that day forward she wasn't. So what I found last night in her things was a four page letter, a love letter, that she wrote to my father after this midnight experience. It is awesome. And I just shared it with Merle today, and I will give him a copy. So they they were very much in love, and we knew that, and we loved them very dearly. It, it was a great family to be reared by. And we thank you for this memorial to them, because that's what it is, a memorial to our parents. Merle is he's responsible for it, but it was their love that created this whole experience. Thank you.